Russian Marxist revolutionary Leon Trotsky was born Lev Davidovich Bronstein on November 7, 1879 in the Ukraine to prosperous Jewish farmer parents. As a young man, Trotsky spread the ideals of socialism and tried to unionize Russian workers. There was fairly widespread support for change and he was inspired by socialist message. He was sort of taking measures to overcome what had been a very inequitable social system. It was at this time that he became acquainted with fellow revolutionary Vladimir Lenin. It was inevitable that an ambitious and intelligent young socialist in Russia, as Trotsky was, would come into contact with the ideas and eventually the person of Lenin sooner or later. And once they did, they forged this lifetime relationship. Lenin was a leader of the Bolsheviks who rose to power during the October Revolution in 1917. Trotsky joined the Bolsheviks right before the revolution and became a leader within the party. Trotsky was one of the most important figures in the Russian Revolution, second only to Lenin in his charisma, his mobilizing, organizing capacities, and second only to Lenin in his revolutionary fervor. After the Bolsheviks took power, they were immediately besieged on all sides. The so-called whites, the monarchists, the liberals, as well as foreign interventionists, all wanted to overturn their revolution. So the Bolsheviks had to immediately create an army. Somebody had to create a new army, and that somebody was Trotsky. In 1920, after three years of fighting, Trotsky's Red Army won the Russian Civil War for the Bolsheviks, who united the country as the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, or the USSR. Trotsky's longtime friend and Soviet leader Vladimir Lenin died in 1924, and a power struggle began for the right to succeed him. Trotsky was the favored candidate because he was the best known. He was at Lenin's side at those key moments in the Civil War. Nobody was more important to the Soviet victory and support of Lenin than Trotsky. Joseph Stalin, the general secretary of the Communist Party, also made a play for Lenin's vacated seat. Lenin would only trust Stalin with party appointments, but precisely that job, the clever Stalin understood, allowed him to build up a growing base of support, of loyalists, of people that when he called on them, would remember what they owed him and vote the way he told them. In 1924, Joseph Stalin became the de facto leader of the Soviet Union. By 1927, Leon Trotsky was thrown out of the Communist Party and exiled. Trotsky arrived in Mexico in 1936 and lived in Mexico City in the Blue House, which was the residence of Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo. Trotsky was too prominent, too opinionated, and too well admired the world over to go into a quiet retirement. He gave interviews, he wrote, he published, and remained squarely in the public eye. Trotskyism, Trotsky's interpretation of Marxism, grew in popularity. At a certain point, Trotsky's criticism couldn't be tolerated anymore. Trotsky was indeed becoming a hero, an alternative, not only for other European countries and would-be socialist revolutionaries, but even an object of fond memory and an alternative path to Stalin in Soviet Russia. On the orders of Joseph Stalin, Leon Trotsky was killed on August 21st, 1940, while exiled in Mexico. Trotsky's head was smashed in by an ice pick. A Spanish socialist hired assassin loyal to Soviet Russia ended Trotsky's life so brutally. Trotsky lives on as a martyr and a symbol of what might have been. This was the true son of the revolution, the true heir to Lenin, who was never given a chance.